So in this video, I'm going to take an example application. I'm going to start with the single thread version of that application, and then I'm going to parallelize it into multiple threads. And I'll use both a shared memory programming model and a message passing programming model. Okay, so here's my application. You know, let me explain what it does. So essentially, you know, you have a number of points in a matrix. Okay, so there are many data elements. This is my matrix, you know, A, I, J. What I'm doing is, in every single step, I'm kind of doing an averaging operation where, you know, every element is influenced by its neighbors. Okay, so in, in some time step, I'll say that this has a current value AIJ. I'm going to modify it based on the average of this value and its four neighbors. So I read in the values of the four neighbors, and I read in my own value as well, and I add these up, divide by five, and that's my new value. Okay, and then I basically have to do this for every single element. So I start over here, then I go here, and I go through my entire two-dimensional array. Okay, so until I'm done, so until my solution converges, okay, and I've converged if my new value is very similar to my old value. Okay, so uh, I'm going to converge until I'm done. There is a diff that I initialize to zero. So this tells me how different is my current value from my old value. Okay, and you know every element obviously is going to have a, have have its own individual diff. I'm going to add all of those up and see if that number is you know larger than a threshold or not. Accordingly, I'm done or I'm not. Okay, so I initialize my diff to zero. Then I basically have you know two nested for loops which are going from uh, one to n for both i and j. Right, so this is my scan of the array. Okay, and at each point I keep track of my old value and my new value is basically you know 1 by 5 of myself plus my neighboring values and then I'm going to increment this diff variable and say that you know my new value is so much different from my old value so that's this step over here and let me add that to my diff counter okay and then when I'm, when I'm done with my entire for loop and I've looked at all the elements I'll see the total value of diff and if that is less than a given threshold then I know that I've converged to my solution I'm done and then I'll, I'll now exit my while loop. Okay, so that is this is my baseline single threaded application. Here's how I will parallelize that using a shared memory model. Okay, so uh, here's my main thread. Okay, and what it does is it first creates space for this global array A. Okay, and then it initializes A. Then it creates n different threads where each thread starts out by executing this procedure solve. Okay, and I'm sending a pointer to my array to each of each one of these threads, right? So there's one piece of global shared memory. Okay, and my array A is sitting in this global shared memory. And all of these many threads can see this global shared memory. So everyone has been given a pointer to the start of this array. Okay, so and you know if, if they issue an appropriate load instruction, they can get all the values sitting in this array. Okay, so now let's see what the procedure itself is going to do. Okay, so the procedure starts out by first saying, you know, what rows have been assigned to me. Okay, let me just draw another big blow up picture of this array A. So this is array A, you know, there are n rows and, you know, n columns as well. And now each thread is going to be assigned a subset of the rows. Okay, so, you know, all the rows until here, all the rows until here are assigned to thread 0. The next set of rows are assigned to thread 1, and so on. Okay, so every thread you know knows what its process ID is, and so with the process ID, it computes the start, the, the starting row that has been assigned to it, and the last row that has been assigned to it. So that's the my min and the my max. Okay, and you know until you are done, I'm going to basically keep iterating over the rows that have been assigned to me. Okay, so until I'm done, I'm going to get into this this while loop, and let's see what that while loop does. Okay, so first it sets the diff and the my diff variable to zero then it executes a barrier instruction and what a barrier does is it says that you know when you get to this point you have to wait for all the other threads to also get to this point okay so you say that I've, I've arrived at barrier 1 and I'm waiting for all these other n threads to get to this point so once everyone has got to that point then you start executing your your for loops okay so you go from my min to my max and you do exactly this uh, this averaging step that I talked about before okay then when you're done, you're going to you're also going to compute my diff. Right? So while you do this over here, uh, you're also going to compute. There's also my diff being computed over here. 
which is you know for the rows assigned to me how much have they deviated from the old value once you're done now you have to increment a global diff variable which is going to add up the diffs for you know every single one of the threads okay so before I do that I'm going to acquire a lock this is because there is a single shared variable that everyone is trying to read and write right so you have to read the old value of diff you have to add my diff to it and then you have to write the new value back into that diff variable okay so if this is my global diff variable I have to first read it then I have to do some increment then I have to write it okay if while you were doing this increment if somebody else tried to read it then they would get an old value right because uh, you know each of these operations has to happen atomically right you need to do the read increment and do the write before someone else does the read okay because if somebody else does a read uh, in the meantime they will do a read this is an old value they will increment and when they write back you basically lose the fact that you know this increment has also happened and that increment basically does not get reflected in your final result okay so this read write and this this read increment and write has to happen atomically which is why I acquire a lock saying I'm the only one that's going to be doing this read increment write operation let me perform this operation then I will release the lock allowing other threads to also perhaps do the same operation so you essentially do this uh, read increment write release the lock then you wait at a barrier saying I'm waiting for everybody else to also do this increment of the diff uh, variable and after everyone has done it now I can examine the value of diff I can see if diff is less than the threshold and if it is then I'm done and everyone's going to see that so you see that I'm done and they're, go they're all going to exit the loop if not then we continue to loop okay so there's another barrier over here and then you finish up okay so this is how you would write your program with shared memory right so everyone can see the, the data that they have access to okay and then there are you know there are many subtle things happening over here as well okay so if you look at you know how I'm operating on this portion of data up here right so let's say that let's look at what one thread is doing okay so when I go through the first row I'm also going to read the values of elements that are in the previous row right because when I'm averaging for this step over here I have to read this value from the previous row that previous row is owned by the previous thread okay and you know I don't have to do any explicit sends and receives to get the data because all the threads can see the entire array A so if I issue a read for this value I will get it okay so there's no fancy programming required in this for loop over here right you can refer to any element of A and you'll be returned the latest value of A okay so that part of the code is has become relatively simple right it's no different than my baseline single threaded piece of code okay you'll also notice that when I read this previous value the value that I'm getting over here is perhaps an old result right so you know when I was doing the single threaded execution I was essentially scanning through the rows like this so when I did an averaging step from for this uh, this element over here when I read this previous element this is actually the new value right this, this this element was just recently processed but when I read an element from here from this previous row the previous thread is still, probably still working on its first or second row okay so this last row has not yet been updated in this iteration okay so you know this this new program is not going to give you exactly the same behavior as my single threaded program okay but you know so it's so your application writer needs some understanding of this program and this code and, and this algorithm to make sure that even though you're deviating from the same data flow model you will still get a result that does work okay so that's something to keep in mind then there are other subtleties as well okay this code has three different barriers sitting over here and if you removed any one of these barriers you would actually end up with a wrong result right so for example if I remove this barrier over here note that every thread is trying to reset my diff and diff to zero okay so if some thread for some reason was stalled okay it's possible that all the other threads set diff to zero and they got into this piece of code many of them even finished the stuff okay and they went ahead and started to increment diff again then finally that one thread that was stuck gets released and the first thing it does is it resets diff right back to zero okay so that's why you know you have to make sure that everyone has reset diff to zero that there is no thread that is going to come along in the future and reset diff back to zero so you have a barrier in place to make sure that everyone has set diff to zero and now you can continue on and start incrementing diff 
as you work through your uh, your application. Now again, similarly over here, you need a barrier to make sure that everyone has incremented diff before you examine its value. Okay, so there's another barrier sitting over here, and if this barrier was not in place, then it's possible that you know some thread again got stuck. So before a thread executed this instruction, maybe it got context switched out for whatever reason. All the other threads examined the value of diff, realized that they were not done, and they went back up again over here. Okay, and some thread, as soon as it goes back up, sets diff equal to zero. Okay, so that thread which was stuck, if it now gets gets unstuck, the first thing it does is it examines the value of diff, and that thread thinks that you know diff is less than less than the threshold because diff has now been set to zero. Okay, so you have to make sure that everyone has examined the value of diff before you go and reset diff back to zero. Okay, and so this is why you have a barrier in place over here as well. Okay, so you know I initially made the argument that you know writing a program with shared memory is easy because you just issue a load in a store and you have access to that common pool of data. Okay, but you can see that if you had made an attempt to write this program, there's a pretty good chance that you would have forgotten at least one of these these three barriers. Okay, so you know it's 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 unfair to perhaps say that it's easy to program in shared memory, right? So writing any parallel application is challenging because you have to worry about so many subtleties. Okay, but um, at least one thing that is made easy by moving to the shared memory model is that you know it is very easy to have access to the shared pool of data that you only have to issue loads and stores and you can get access to that data okay but you still have to worry about uh, you know various various subtleties and you know various synchronization operations